Anxiety is a signal. First, to pray. That's what it is. It's not to fight. Like, you're not going to fight against anxiety. No, no, no. I'm going to pray. When, when I'm feeling this alert go off, I'm going to go to God in prayer. I love Dr. Caroline Leaf, man. She's, if you don't follow her, you need to follow her. She, re- she wrote this book called Switch on Your Brain, one of many books that she wrote. On her website, um, it says, explains who she is. She is a communication pathologist and cognitive neuroscientist with a master's and PhD in communication pathology and a BSc in lagopedic specializing in cognitive and metacognitive neuroscience. I don't have any idea what that means, you guys, but what I'm saying is she is so smart, man. She's an amazing woman of God. So like on my website, it's like father, husband, pastor. (laughs) This this girl is on fire. Here's what she says. Look what she said. It has been found that 12 minutes of daily focused prayer over an eight-week period can change the brain to such an extent that it can be measured on a brain scan. Like, this is such good news because our brains and minds can get fixated on all the wrong stuff. But she says you can actually change your brain, the structure of your brain by what you think. This is called neuroplasticity. Neuroplasticity. It's actually, when you think thoughts, you're actually firing in your, in your brain is happening. And, and neuroplasticity says the more you think a thought, the more often you're going to think that thought. And the more you think that thought, the easier it is to think that thought. So here's what's happening in your mind when you're thinking that thought. Think of it like this. Like, like if there was a big dirt field and I parked my car over here and the building that I'm going into is way over there. And every day for years, I'm parking my car right here and I'm walking to that building in this dirt field. There's no pass. But day after day after day, week, month, and year, as I trek the dirt from my car to the building, I'm going to create a footpath. What you're doing with your thoughts is actually creating a neural footpath between where you are and that thought. So the more that you walk that thought, the more you think that, oh, I'm going to die. The more you think he's going to leave me. The more you think I don't have enough. The more you think that, that all these thoughts, the more you think those, the easier it is for you to think. It almost becomes an automatic thought eventually that your mind just goes to that needs to be cut off. The Bible says that anxiety interrupts the path or that prayer interrupts the path of anxiety. When when the problems start, here's what happens is we dwell on on the alert signal instead of the actual problem. We start focusing on the alert signal. In the Bible, the word most commonly used for anxiety is merimnau. Merimnau. It means dwelling and pondering on fearful, anxious thoughts. You're literally meditating on the negative, you're training your brain to be anxious. We're training our mind and prayer breaks the cycle of anxiety in the path that you have created to your dread and your fear. So, so what is it? What's the, how do I get this peace that guards my, man, you gotta have, you gotta put the glove up, man. You better, you, you need, anxiety is a signal to pray. And not just any prayer, not just prayers of complaint, prayers of negativity, Right? Prayers of like, like just like, I mean, God, not, God, it's okay. You can unload on God. Remember, you can unload on God. But not just there. You don't stay there. The apostle Paul, when he's in Philippians 4, we, he says prayer and thanksgiving. See, you interrupt anxiety with gratitude. Because that gives some opposite. Here's what's so cool. Again, studies have been done on this, you guys. There is different chemicals that get released when you're anxious But the opposite chemicals get released and produced into your body when you are grateful. So so when you are grateful, your brain releases neurotransmitters and neurohormones that actually enhance your mood, enhance your attitude. They give you clarity of focus. They actually produce mental and physical health when you are grateful. So the next time you're feeling anxious, you interrupt your anxiety with prayer and thanksgiving. This is, this is the biblical pattern, what Paul is showing us here. It's like, hey, if you want the peace that guards, you need to, the first, anxiety is a signal. It's not a sin, it's a signal that you need to pray. The second signal he gives us is praise. Think of it like a boxer, right? Put your gloves up. Prayer, praise. Come on, devil, come at me. Okay? You got, you, anxiety is a signal of praise. And you don't just praise after the battle. You don't just praise when you have the victory, when the enemy is defeated. You praise God before the blessing. You praise God before the provision. You praise God before the anxiety is gone. You praise God. 
That, so, so some of you, what you need to do is develop a playlist of some praise and worship songs that actually speak of the goodness of God, the provision of God, the victory of God, the, how grateful you are of God. And you need to, in the middle of your battle, you need to start praying and praising God. The Bible tells us that when we pray, we praise peace that surpasses all understanding. Like, like I'm still in the storm. I'm still in the ring. I'm still in the ring. I'm still fighting this thing. But in the middle of this, in the middle of this ring, in the middle of this match, in the middle of the storm, I'm, I, I got peace that is guarding my heart. See, prayer and praise are the pathway to peace. When anxiety attacks, don't drop your guard. Number two, when anxiety attacks, you got to redirect your thinking. There is Write that down. Redirect your thinking. There is nothing more important for your mind than the Word of God. The Word of God has all authority. The Bible counteracts all that negative thinking and negative stuff that you have received all day and all week. I highly recommend daily Bible reading, getting into your Word of God every day. I don't care if it's a paper Bible, an app, on your, I don't care where it's at. Just get the Word of God into your mind every day. Dr. Charles Cooley, he's the dean of American sociology, he says this, your self-esteem, your self-worth, or your image is determined to a large degree by what you think the people or the person that matters the most to you think about you. So we develop our self-esteem, self-worth, our identity based on what we think the person that's important to us or people that's important to us think about us. Can I tell you something? Some of you think too much about what other people think about you. And it's producing a lot of anxiety. And I would encourage you to make Jesus the person who matters most to you, that, you would, that, that what he thinks about you matters most than what anyone else thinks about you. Instead of focusing on the discouraging, the sad, the scary thoughts, you gotta, you got to look for the good. Notice I didn't say see the good. you got to look for it. you got to look for the good. And you can't just stop thinking anxious thoughts. That doesn't work. Thought stopping doesn't work. Like, just stop. Stop thinking those thoughts. Why can't I just stop? It doesn't work. Your mind doesn't work that way. They actually did this famous study. It's called the White Bear Study. These, the participants in this study, they were told, they were put in a room, they were told to close their eyes, and, and they were given a bell in their hand, and they were told, okay, whatever you do, don't think of a white bear. And the moment you think of a white bear, you have to ring that bell, okay? Okay, so whatever you do, don't think of a white bear, ready, go. And like within two seconds, so they've done a lot of studies like that because and found out that you can't really, like not thinking about the, don't think about the white bear, is thinking about the white bear. Telling myself, don't think about the white bear, I'm thinking about the white bear, you guys. So, so what Paul tells us in this very next verse, he tells us where our thoughts need to be redirected in the middle of our anxiety. It's not a sin to have anxiety. It's how you manage the anxiety. And he tells us what to do, how to redirect your thinking and create new neural pathways in your mind. He says in Philippians 4, 8, finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is True, stop believing lies. Whatever is true, whatever is noble, right, pure, lovely, admirable, excellent, and praiseworthy, that's where I need to be meditating. That's where my thoughts need to be fixed on. If I want to have perfect peace, whatever is true, you got to tell yourself, my husband isn't cheating on me. I'm not going to get fired. My family does love me. I am a good mother. I am a good father. You got to say whatever is honorable. You got to think honorable thoughts about people. Speak well about them. Whatever is right, the right thing to do, the ethical, the logical, the, the moral, whatever is pure. Believe the best about people. Stop believing the worst about people and believe the best in situations and, and in whatever is lovely. You know what lovely thoughts are? Lovely thoughts are God thoughts. God is love. When you think lovely thoughts, you are thinking about God. Whatever is admirable, admire people. Admire your surroundings. Admire your situation. Think on excellent and praiseworthy things. I know what some of you are thinking, though, at this point of my message, some of you that deal with anxiety, you've done all these things. You prayed, you praised, tried to redirect your thinking. And some of you might think, okay, is that it? Like if I pray and I praise and I redirect my thinking, are you telling me that God is going to heal my anxiety? I understand it's not always that easy, that there's a journey. 
of healing that needs to happen. It's not always as easy as just like a, maybe a Bible verse. Some of, you, some of you need to actually change your diet if you want to be free from anxiety. Some of you need to change your, your exercise habits. Some of you need to, need to change your prescriptions if you actually want to have perfect peace and have no more anxiety. Some of you need to go through counseling and explore the reasons underneath some stuff. Or maybe you need to go to cognitive behavioral therapy and actually relearn some things on how to deal with the emotional strains of normal adult life. Okay, so I get it. I get it. I'm not saying that this is like it. I'm not giving you the easy fix it. I'm giving you the spiritual, like no matter what you do, counseling, therapy, whatever all, whatever you do, and some of you need to do some stuff beyond this, but it needs to include this. Anxiety is not a sin. It is a signal to pray and praise and redirect your thinking. You have to do that. We have to. And then lastly, and some of you ain't going to like this, but when anxiety attacks, you got to get undercover. And I'm not talking about your bed covers. That's what some of you do. Some of you are like, ah, anxiety attacks. And some of you go, just hide yourself or just kind of, that's not what I'm talking about, the undercover. I'm talking about here, um, 1 Peter chapter 5 kind of gives us some insight on what to do with anxiety. He says, God opposes the proud but shows favor to the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand. Under what? Oh, I got to get under, I got to get under God's mighty hand that he may lift me up in due time cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you if you're struggling with anxiety you might not easily find the connection that peter is making between humility and anxiety some of you think well i don't think very highly of myself at all that's not my problem i think i'm a i'm a scum i think i'm terrible i think i'm just weak I think I can't, I can't do that. That's not, that's, not what I, that's not what Peter is saying here. He's not saying that you're proud. See, pride, pride is thinking highly of yourself. But just because you're not proud doesn't mean you are humble. Now, I know you're not going to like this, but, but there's a revelation here for some of you. There's revelation. Because humility isn't thinking less of yourself. It's thinking of yourself less. Just consider the language. Consider your self-talk. Consider your language that you're telling. Like, listen to it. I, I, I don't know if I have what it takes, and, and I don't know if I can do, and I don't know if I can make it. What if I, 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 Maybe you've been carrying anxiety that you can't get rid of because you're bearing a weight that you weren't meant to bear. Did you hear that? Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. I need to humble myself and remember, it is God's hand that is mighty, not mine. He is the one that empowers me to do and accomplish everything that he has called me to do. I need to humble myself and recognize I don't have the capacity to do everything. Every problem is not my problem to solve. Every person is not my person to serve and to fix. Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. Now check this out, check this out. I was reading this verse and, and the Lord showed me revelation. That's not, that, it's not a command. The command of this verse is not cast all your cares and cast all your anxieties on him. If you actually look at the Greek of this, there is no period that's right there. It's actually one continuous, that's not the command. The command isn't cast all your anxieties, it's the result. The command of this verse is humble yourself under God's mighty hand, and when you do, your anxieties are cast from you You're, with your need to control it, with your need to fix it and figure it out. If you would just take the weight off your back and put God on the throne of your heart. Sometimes you pull verse seven out of con context and we say, oh, cast all your anxieties on God because he cares for you, and that by itself is a wonderful verse and it's a beautiful promise, and yes, God does care for you, and, and, and he's a shepherd and he loves us, but before we're called to cast our anxieties on him, we are called to humble ourselves under God's mighty hand. Stop thinking less of yourself redirect your thinking in agreement with God's word about you instead of in agreement with the devil about you. Redirect my, stop thinking less of yourself and start thinking of yourself less. Peter continues in verse eight. He says, and be on your what? On your guard. Peace, peace, peace is the guard. 
guards our hearts and minds. Be on your guard and stay awake because your enemy, the devil, is like a roaring lion sneaking around to find someone. He sneak attacks. You know what I'm saying? The devil is sneaky. He don't come right at you. He sneaks. He's sneaking around telling you lies, deceptions. Let me close with this and I'm praying for you. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, 32. Powerful verse. It simply says this. God says, I want you to be free from anxieties. God does not want you living under the anxiety, the stress, the weight, figuring it out, fixing it. How can I? What if I? He doesn't want you under the anxiety. Get under the mighty hand of God. And the result, the result of that, casting all of your anxieties on him because he cares for you. Hey, thank you for watching the Discovery Church YouTube channel. Don't stop here. Join the Discovery Online family every Sunday. Subscribe to this channel so you don't miss a single video or live stream event and share it with a friend. You can also support the ministry by clicking the give button to help us continue to reach people around the world for Jesus Christ. Thank you again for watching. Go love God, love each other, and change the world.